Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're taking a look at this beautiful brass barreled flintlock Jaeger. Rifled brass barrels were rarely seen, but examples from continental Europe and the US are known in limited numbers. While brass barrels are not as strong as iron or steel barrels, they have the advantage of being resistant to corrosion, which is super important when we're talking about black powder firearms. Much like contemporary muzzleloaders, where we see different uh, alloys and you know, combinations of metal and different coatings being used on the barrel, we can think of brass barreled muzzle loaders as some of the first versions of that like we see today. The barrel on this attractive hunting rifle has seven grooves in its rifling, a dovetailed blade front sight, a notch rear sight with an ornate finial. It has a folding notch, although it is absent on this example, and scroll engraving on the breech section inhabited by a bestial mask. Because brass barreled muzzleloaders are fairly unique, when I saw this in the catalog for Rock Island's upcoming May auction, I just wanted to get hands on with it. I've seen several brass barreled smoothbore muzzleloaders, but seeing one like this with the brass rifled barrel, I just, I just had to take a look at it. And really that was the indicator for me that I wanted to see it. I didn't really pay much attention to the rest of the muzzleloader until I got to see it here this morning. And it's overall a really interesting piece. With the brass barrel, we have an interesting brass lock plate here with a brass lock cock bolt here that goes with our brass trigger guard butt plate and the wrist extension here on the top part of the wrist. As if the brass barrel and the brass lock plate and the rest of the brass furniture really weren't interesting enough, we have several pieces of horn that add another level of detail to this piece. You'll notice, I think, right off the bat that our nose cap is horn, which isn't uncommon, especially in these hunting pieces. But I think a little bit of a sneaky piece in our patch box lid, at least to my eye looking at it and even from a distance, the patch box lid almost looks like it could be brass as well to match the barrel, the lock plate and the rest of the furniture here. But upon closer inspection, we can see the grain structure of horn. I think through time, we can see here that it is warped a little bit as it lays on the stock. Originally, this could have been boiled in some kind of oil to form it correctly to the stock. It's flexed a little bit with age, but I think that adds some interesting detail to the piece that you don't see a lot on muzzleloaders. I mean, we have patch box lids, we have a wide variety of patch box lids, but one that is horn, I think, is just really special. As we open up the patch box here, I'll show you an inset detail of this patch box lid so you can see it. But we have the horn face, which is really the plate side or the exterior side of this patch box lid. And it's carved and shaped a lot like other patch boxes that you'll see. It has some molding carving around the edges and uh, kind of going along with the curve of the butt plate back here. We don't have a notch to grab this to help with or to aid with its removal. But we do have a really traditional, just kind of simple spring back here, like you'd see on just about any other sliding wood patch box. On the inside though, uh, it looks to be glued to this patch box, the actual, I guess, wood dovetail of the patch box. And we have a, a carved inlet really here to house the spring that holds this whole patch box lid in. I want to make a note on the interior of this patch box. I receive a lot of questions uh, from contemporary builders and contemporary enthusiasts really on whether or not they should finish the inlets of their patch boxes and uh, of their hardware inlets. And this is another example of an antique or original piece that does not have a finished patch box inlet. Uh, these were often left just plain wood, no oil or no stain going in there. Um, and they were left that way. Over time, I think as you maybe applied some pre-lube patches or some oily patches in here, you may have rubbed some oil off into that patch box area, but uh, this one looks to be pretty, pretty simply no finish in there. 
I'm going to flip it over here. You'll notice here on the bottom side, we have a very simple flathead screw as our sling stud, very common for the Jaeger style rifles. And then we have a loop sling swivel up here in the forestock, right between two pins that connect to our first ramrod pipe towards the muzzle. An interesting thing to note here, both of our other ramrod pipes, both our entry pipe back here and our center ramrod pipe, both have a pin going through the center of the ramrod pipe uh, fin as it goes into the stock. The front sling swivel has its pin going through that same point. So I wonder if that point or that uh, pin is also going through that ramrod pipe just as a, a, something aesthetically pleasing, that it's not unbalanced up here, but we have those two other pins there as well holding that in. Just, a, a, I think, a, a note to make there as far as the assembly of this rifle goes. At the forestock here along our barrel and ramrod channel, we have a simple single line cut molding that continues for about a quarter of an inch up into the horn fore end cap and then kind of fades off, which I think is a nice detail that that carving doesn't terminate when the material changes and it balances through into the horn. We have an interesting side plate here. We have a lot of stylistic choices here on the hardware that really go back to that German, you know, European heritage uh, with all these floral motifs and these masks and wildlife figures in here, really common across the hunting rifles and the kind of early sporting rifles from that era. You'll notice that this is a really intricate side piece. Those of you that have uh, built and assembled your own muzzleloaders will know that this would be a tricky piece to inlet. Um, it's got a lot of, of curves and windows here that uh, I know I would really chip out a lot of these pieces of wood, which uh, makes it all the nicer. Measuring this rifle, it's only 31 and a half inches long from muzzle to the butt. The barrel itself is 21 and a half inches of that. So as we get back here to the breech, the butt stock of this rifle is super short. And I think that's really accented by this large wrist or thumb piece back here. And as we come back to our cheek rest here or the cheek piece, we have a little bit more carving. Now this rifle isn't done to the nines. I would consider this just a fine hunting piece. We come back here, we have similar floral motifs or at least leaf motifs that we see uh, in the carving matching the side plate and matching the engraving on the top of the barrel. But this comes back to a really interesting cheek piece that I personally haven't seen before. We have a cheek piece here that has a horn cap on it. So where traditionally we would see this completed in wood coming out to a wood cheek rest. This has a nice, really, uh, you know, it's been carved a little bit. There's a bit, a little bit of molding on this, but tacked on with two pins here at your cheek rest. Is this original to the rifle or was this added on maybe after it was dropped on a hunting trip? It's hard to say, but the horn here is aged in a similar manner and I would say a little bit more so than we see up here at the front end cap. Uh, you know, maybe some of the oils from the hunter or the shooter taking aim with this piece rubbing off and staining this a little bit over time. Uh, it's hard to say. Again, if this could talk, it'd be really neat to see what it had to say. As we come back through, we have similar matching leaf and scroll patterns here as we see through the rest of the piece. And as we get back here to our butt plate, we have a nice, nice, I would say, brass butt plate. Um, the engraving on it is just, just exquisite. It's beautiful. We have a nice flower here along the base of the butt plate. And that continues up here to the top of the butt plate where the engraving stays just beautiful around this screw. And again, we have a kind of grotesque mask as we head up to the front end of the butt plate. Continuing our look at the hardware here, you'll notice that the trigger guard has a similar front end as our butt plate does. And then we have some engraving and another grotesque mask back in here where your fingers would wrap around that trigger guard. The ramrod pipes are engraved as well, matching 
the similar motifs that we're seeing all around this piece. While it is still a short rifle, it shoulders well, it balances well in the hand, and it just kind of has that classic Jaeger utility. If you're in an area with thick brush, uh, lots of shrubs where you're hunting, or you're, you're, you're working where you, you know, can't swing around a big long rifle, this is just a great little piece. Can you imagine just going through the woods with this at your side? Just, just boom. You're right there, you're ready to go. Just a neat, I just love Jaegers. I've got a few here that we're taking a look at and, uh, and this one does not disappoint. The sights are very similar to the other original pieces that we take a look at. Very small and very short blade front sight and the notch in our rear sight is almost non-existent. But at least in decent lighting conditions, you can pick up on your front sight through that rear sight and, and take aim relatively well. This, like many Jaegers, has a flip up rear sight. It's missing on this particular piece, but um, we have a few others that we'll be looking at in other videos that you can check out to see an example of that. As we head back to the breech of the barrel, we have more beautiful engraving like we see around the rest of the rifle. Uh, it's very common to see engraving here back at the tang and the breech and this rifle does not disappoint. Real classic scrolls and leaves here. You know, nothing too out of the ordinary, but nice nonetheless. I wanna talk about the lock and the lock plate here a little bit, because I think apart from really the barrel and the tang area where we have all the engraving, this is the beautiful piece of this rifle. The lock has, back at the tail end of the lock plate, has another kind of funky, grotesque mask there that we're used to seeing in a lot of these pieces. That is emulated as we come up to the cock bolt. We have another grotesque mask there, and it's really deep engraving or, or casting here. It's three-dimensional. It, this isn't you know flat engraving like we see on the top of the barrel. It's really beautiful what they've done here, really sculptural, I would say. The cock itself has a lot of engraving and some floral three-dimensional patterns. The rest of the lock plate has a beautiful stag there running through the woods with some simple leaf engraving around there. The frizzen spring has some engraving as well, and we have a relatively plain frizzen. I've got it on half cock here so I can show you that stag. Bring it back to full cock. You hear that click. Not a super light trigger on there, but it is a single trigger there. So you don't want it to be too light. You know, overall, a really interesting piece. The, the burl stock here is just beautiful. It has a little bit of a bird's eye uh, pattern going through there, which I just love. I mean, it's a Jaeger, which Jaegers are just cool. And on top of that, you have the brass rifled barrel. This has seven grooves in its brass rifling. It's just a really beautiful piece. You'll notice here at the muzzle end. I'd like to thank the Rock Island Auction Company for inviting me out to take a look at some neat muzzleloaders like this and many more. Uh, if you'd like to see more pictures and learn a little bit more about these, I encourage you to visit the Rock Island Auction. They have a lot of really neat pictures and documentation to go along with these original pieces. Their photographers are much better than I am. So if you'd like to see more up close details of these, please check them out and follow their social media pages as they're continually posting information and beautiful photographs about original muzzleloaders, just like this one. I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.